Welcome back everybody. So we're resuming the recipe. Remember the full cycle starter main dessert today. It is starter or appetizer day and for the occasion because spring is creeping in some part of the world. We're going to be making fish as a starter with a classic salmon tartar taken directly from our cookbook. The reason I'm picking this is because I think people tend to think that making a tartar is very hard. Well, in fact, it is super easy. It is just an assembly of ingredients, good quality salmon. You chop it off. You have the special mixture made on the mayonnaise and other herbs, and then you mix everything together, a little food ring for the presentation, and you are done. So if you bought the book, you've been a bit scared to make that recipe. Let me show you how easy it is to make. Salmon tartar, here we are. Let's decompose, very simple. On one side, you've got the fresh quality salmon. This is bought today, this is a king salmon by what it's called sometimes in the USA, like the sushi migrate salmon, so something that you can eat actually raw. And don't get uh, an old piece of salmon that's been in the fridge for ages. It needs to be super fresh, so always be very careful when you eat raw product, of course. But this is the salmon and all of that is going to be the flavoring. So look at the things. We've got capers, shallots, top quality mustard, Tabasco, English sauce, olive oil, parsley, uh, chives, plenty of little things that's going to really make the whole thing pop. Okay, so now for the process. First step, the salmon. So the salmon is going to have to be chopped in very small cubes. You don't want to use a food processor, you want to use a knife. I'm actually having a go at the handmade Japanese stainless steel knife. It is not made of carbon steel, it's just standard stainless steel. We'll see how it performs. So safety guideline, always use a synthetic board that is clean when you work with raw products. So here fish, very important. Your hands, you can put gloves, otherwise you wash them like me and you dry them using a clean paper towel like this. Don't use your tea towel, maybe contaminated. Okay. And when you got everything, well, we're ready first to remove the skin. You can buy the skin off. I like to have the skin on. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this actually in the freezer a little bit to firm up and start the freezing process because it is very easy to cut because at the moment, it's very, very wobbly. So I'm going to try to use that knife here to remove uh, the skin under. And once we're done with that, okay, oh, I'm going to put the skin on here, up. I'm going to put this onto a plate. I've got here. And I'm going to put this in the freezer while we make the mise en place. So now that the salmon is cooling down, we've got plenty of time uh, to do the mise en place. The mise en place is the food preparation. So let's do this together. If you were to make that recipe at home, the first thing you will do is the salmon. The second is the mise en place. You can start with all the things you can measure. So we've got the olive oil on here. I've got the Tabasco. I've got the English sauce. I've got some good quality capers. Ingredients have to be of good quality, good quality shallots. An egg yolk. So you measure everything, salt and pepper. And I've got Dijon mustard. People tell me, oh, Dijon mustard is always the same in the supermarket. No, if you go online, you can source things like that. Moutard de Bonne, which is the real mustard also from Dijon that is made by the stone. You know, they're grinding the mustard seed with the stone and the taste is totally different. So it pays to shop online and have good quality salt, pepper, vinegars, mustard, because at the end, it really will change everything. So this is the first part. You can chop everything, measure everything. And now let's look at the herbs. The herbs finely chopped as well, very simple. We only have parsley and chives, so pretty common. Now, something we always teach in our beginner course, when you chop parsley, you don't take like this, the whole branch with the stalks and everything like that. And you do what is called effeuiller. It means plucking. And you pluck as much as you can, just the leaves, leaving as much as you can, the stalks of the parsley behind. So the big branches like that, you don't want that into uh, your salmon tartar. If you're in a restaurant and you get this in your, in your mouth, you're going to be, what the hell is going on? Not good. Up, remove it. And then, and the same thing, huh? you're going to have your, your parsley. Uh, we all know about the cross chop. So you're going to really doing that. You start with this very slow chopping of the parsley. You gather everything together and you keep on chopping like this. And you can accelerate until you get something really fine. So we keep going. Very quickly, you have your finish of parsley. This is the kind of size you don't want big branches. Next, the chive. This is so easy to cut. It's such a great training for thinly slicing. It's always held by the elastic or something in here, so you don't have to care about your hand and that thing rolls around. And you take your knife, and here, same thing. You want to try to really get something really thin. So you can have first that little off cut. And that is not the best. I'm going to discard this because it's not always straight, maybe a bit dry. And then you're going to try to really 
Now we're going to stick to the, really the thin stuff, hein, as, as much as we can, hein, something quite thin. The mise en place is now finished, and as you can see, there is no cooking involved. It's only measuring and chopping stuff. That's about it. From here, we're going to use the egg yolk, the oil, the master, to make an olive oil based mayonnaise and then flavor it with some herbs and some condiments, salt and pepper mustard, and that's it. So let's begin. All what we need to do here is to have a mayonnaise. So we're going to put some salt. We're going to have a little bit of pepper in here. As a mayonnaise, we're going to have the egg yolk. We're making a mayonnaise that's using mustard. Okay, so we're going to use a little bit of mustard. And all what we're doing, like a mayonnaise, is to first mix the mustard with the egg yolk, the salt and the pepper. And we emulsify. Remember, we've seen this on the last lesson, emulsifying. We want to get that emulsion going. Okay, the emulsion has started, starts to thicken. You could add a little bit of lemon juice. We'll put it after if you want. But here, what we're going to use is olive oil. And all what we're going to do is the same as the mayonnaise. We incorporate bit by bit. And the same as we've seen, we're making that base of olive oil mayonnaise. That's all it is. I'm finished, so you can see the color is a bit dark. It's very thick. So what we're going to do here, we're going to start to incorporate a few teaspoons of lemon juice. And that is going to really whiten your mix, which is much more appetizing, and render the whole sauce a little bit more runny. So usually you need about the juice of half a lemon. Huh? Once you're finished, you should get something a little bit runny, like this, okay? So because I'm making uh, this for two only, I'm gonna take half off before we continue. I've took half of my mayonnaise base, and as you can see here, the only cooking part of that recipe is making a mayonnaise. If you're able to make a mayonnaise, that's it. The rest is just having fun. So you've got your base, and then we're gonna be flavoring. So we've got the shallots. We're gonna add a good tablespoon. Here, I'm doing divided in two of those. A good tablespoon of chives. Look at these colors, isn't that great? Okay, a bit of parsley. It's up to you if you want to change the measurement, more or less. It's really up to you. And then just a few drops of Tabasco, for instance, I like the heat. And that's going to cook the salmon as well. And the English sauce, same thing, and just a few, uh, a few drops. And that's about it. First here, we're going to mix everything together. And now back to the salmon. So, the end result, or the size of cubes that you need, is this. You can see, really, really small cubes. So I've got my salmon in the freezer, but you need to leave it quite some time in order for it to be really, really kind of semi-hard and easy to slice. That said, let me take it out and I'll show you how to do these cubes. Okay, so let's make some cubes. So you got any kind of piece of salmon, you see there's a small bit there, it's a large there, so you have to make slices first. If you want, and you can just adjust this Keep this for later, you can do the cubes later. Take something rather a rectangle. You start by doing a slice. Okay, I'm just gonna show you with one. Okay, you get a slice like that. From the slice, you go again. This way, you're gonna be making these so-called batons, and these little matchsticks. So you gather them neatly, one by one, in front of each other. And from here, you can take your knife, and you're gonna try to make the smallest possible cubes that you can. And the result is here. So let's recap. We've done the flavored mayonnaise. We've diced the salmon. It's all ready. And now it's just an assembly before the serving. So what I like to do is to just put a little bit of the mayonnaise first to see how much I've got some salmon here. Uh, like I said, I use half, but I don't know the exact grammage that I've got. And I'm gonna start to mix my salmon with the mayonnaise, with the sauce. So that's not bad. And I've got still, you know, plenty of salmon. So I'm going to continue. So here, you will clearly see, for instance, that if you got something like that, it's too much salmon. You know, it's really lots and lots of salmon and not much dressing, but happily I've got my leftover. So you can add accordingly. It is always good to go step by step and to adjust and to see, but usually the measurements are proper. What I've gave you on the book, it's, it's pretty conservative, but it's good enough. So you get a good distribution of flavored mayonnaise. You got the ingredients and the salmon. It is important to have 
enough of that uh, mayonnaise because there's a lot of lemon, there's some Tabasco, and that in turn will actually cook the salmon. And cooking the salmon like a marinade is a very important. So this is why we're going to cover this with plastic wrap. And I'm going to leave this for a good 10, even 15 minutes. You could even leave it for 20 minutes in the fridge and let that marinating happen. The flavors are going to infuse and it's going to start to slightly cook the outside of the salmon. And that's the secret of that salmon tartare. So let's put this in the fridge and then plating. The time is up and look at the transformation. I should have used the word macerating rather than marinating. I know a lot of you always telling me, correct me. Uh, yes, the maceration, look at this, the color has changed and now it's much more appetizing. I'm going to have a little bit. And you like to know that this is a textbook classic from culinary school and that a lot of chefs have tried. So, cheers, let's have a, another taste. Mm. You know what? For me, that salmon tartar as a basic covers all the bases. I mean, it's fragrant. You are just enough of everything. You feel the capers, the Tabasco, the dressing and the shallots, a little bit of the lemon and the salmon in the background. Nothing is overpowering. And even if you wanted, you could adjust some stuff. So now let's do some plating. If you've seen the picture of the book, you will have that really neat kind of salmon tartar. And this is made with a food ring. The food ring is the best thing you can use at home when it comes to plating stuff like this, like salads. It looks so much better with a food ring. All what you need to do is to fill this. So you put your ring, there's all kinds of size that you can, uh, you can do depending on how much you want. Okay, and you'll be filling that thing with your mixture and then flatten it up. I usually find a tool, this is something I got from a cocktail and you have to squeeze lemon like when you make mojito and stuff. And you can just use this to flatten the whole thing. So you can have that much, okay? But if you really want to fit it all the way to the brim, you can. Huh? So, you know, if you have more height, the more height, the better. So you try to aim for the middle of the plate as much as you can and then very delicately, you know, hold the side, pull that thing up and boom, look at that. So we've tasted already. So when you serve, I don't have the radishes that I had the last time, for instance, I can use some pieces of cucumber if you want to make it simple. I'm going to throw a piece of dill on here, a piece of dill on there, just to decorate. You can have these lemons and you twist them, you cut them in half. I can put some composure like this. And then it's just a matter of uh, adding an addition of extra capers, the things that we've used, a bit of this, a bit of that. You can put a little bit of parsley if you want. It's all the, the products that you've been using, okay? A grain of black pepper, why not? And if you want to drizzle, you can drizzle uh, a bit of oil, okay, not much, okay? And you can use bread, but this time, for instance, why not use some fancy kind of toast-like <laughs> biscuit I put on the side. And there you have it. You can serve a simple salmon tartare. So as you can see, making the tartare was not difficult. So if you've been looking at the picture, thinking, oh my God, I can never do this. It is absolutely easy. All what you need to do is to measure a few things, chop some herbs, make a mayonnaise, and chop some salmon. And that goes for the rest of the recipe we've got on our book. Everything is made simple and will absolutely taste great. That salmon tartare, honestly speaking, is one of the best versions I've tried. Even when going to cafes and restaurants, I had many attempts and it's not coming even closer to this. Try it out. Tell me what you think in the comment section. As for me, I will see you on the next video where we're going to be doing a main and I've got some beautiful short ribs to prepare. So make sure you don't miss that video to see what we can do with that. See you then. My app.